Thank you, Declan, and good afternoon. Wow. Climbing the Mount Everest is a challenge, or pronouncing interoperability under stress can be challenging. But getting this time slot right after the lunch break to guide you through the legal interoperability approach of the Commission, I think I cannot complain either. But uh, I like challenges, so let's see the slides together. Hopefully. But, okay, I find it. So first of all, not a surprise, is um, the definition. And I think it's uh, either not a surprise that um, I will refer to the policy document, which we mentioned already several times this morning, which is the legal interoperability framework. And the legal interoperability framework has a definition of legal interoperability saying that is about ensuring that organizations operating under different legal frameworks, policies, and strategies are able to work together. It's a short definition, still it took me some time to figure out my interpretation. And of course, some keywords helped like organizations able to work together. Sorry, I'm not mastering this wonderful tool excellently. But anyway, so organizations in our context are essentially public, European public administrations, and able to work together is basically establishing European public services within their member states and between member states. And when they are doing so, they are work under different legal frameworks, as just pointed out by Declan. So what to do with these frameworks? And this is my main takeaway, basically, regarding this definition, that I have to really look at legislation and ensure that legislation doesn't hinder, but on the contrary, fosters all the other layers of interoperability, being it organizational, semantic, or technical. The EIF also contains a recommendation about uh, interoperability. Guys, I'm really sorry, but... This is not my tool, which says that we should run interoperability checks on legislation to look for interoperability barriers and also address them. And at the same time, we should also focus at new legislation to ensure that it fits to the big picture. It's consistent, which is already there. For example, it's consistent with the European Europe interoperability framework. As a SWE in the ISSWR program has the mission to support the implementation of uh, the EIF. Of course, we also have a dedicated action on uh, the legal interoperability. And you can see that we already propose some tools and services there. For example, we have a digital screening where we look at new legislation and drafted by policy officers of the European, European Commission. And when, if, when we see ICT impacts or interoperability coming up, then we go and offer support to the policy DG. For example, we can share our ICT impact assessment guidelines and methodology. We are also experimenting with interoperability checks, exactly as foreseen by the EIF recommendation to find existing interoperability barriers and do something about them. And also we have an interoperability cost-benefit analysis tool, which has the potential to become a nice decision-supporting tool in the future. But we are not yet there, and we have a broader vision. We would like to really go, and finally we arrive to this <laughs> nice uh, vision, which is jumping for me, that our ambition is to really cover the whole policy cycle of the Commission, starting from the preparation of legislation until its adoption and also its implementation phase. So what we aim at to refine our existing tools and even enrich them in order that we can screen newly proposed legislation and for those when we see that there is interoperability at stake, we can provide in-depth assessment and follow up the work. And also, as you can see on the bottom of the figure, we can look at and keep screening of adopted legislation and identify possible existing interoperability barriers and again proactively go towards the policy DG and change that. But we are not yet there, and our issue is basically the low awareness. The low awareness, you see, I just push one button and I have the whole presentation, so I just put it there. So the low awareness, and Declan started that we are in a state now where interoperability is well known. Unfortunately, my experience at the Commission doesn't confirm it entirely yet. So actually, my main challenge is 
that policy people not entirely understand this very technical term. And when they have to struggle with the better regulation guidelines of the Commission, which is really the Bible, how we should draft legislation or revise legislation, they see it's just an additional burden and, and they try to avoid. So what I have to do about or my team is really to raise awareness, find the right audience, the right channels, the right message, branding interoperability, explaining in simple words, and provide the appropriate support as well so they can cope with that. And in these efforts, actually I have already some support or there are sources I can rely on. First of all, in the morning we already mentioned the Tallinn Declaration, so it clearly gives us a political framework especially in this um, Tallinn Declaration, the ministers of, for e-governance called upon the Commission to fully integrate digital considerations into existing and future policy and regulatory initiatives. And while it talks about digital as the final end, of course, for me, the message is that the key enabler interoperability should be also further promoted. Also, the better regulation stock-taking exercise, which is ongoing now, led by the Secretary General of the Commission, could, be, could give us a, an opportunity to better position our message in this guideline documents targeted to, to policy officers so they better understand why they shouldn't avoid to face interoperability questions early on when addressing leg legislation. And also a new idea popped up recently, which we are experimenting now, is whether or not we could possibly link interoperability with subsidiarity, because subsidiarity is really the first test which any policy officers and any DG proposing new legislation has to pass. Has the EU at all right to intervene and address the problem, or it should be left for lower levels? And very often the justification that, yeah, we have the right is that there is something cross-border. And if there is cross-border, there is interoperability. So maybe by positioning ourselves in this direction could give us some more visibility and more influence. Also, very recently, just last week, the Commission adopted its digital strategy, which also gives us a hook saying that we should provide guidelines to Commission policy makers to address IT issues in new legislation and also cover legal and semantic interoperability. So we can do it even internally in the Commission. And finally, I also do believe that commitment and enthusiasm matters. So I'm very grateful to my colleague, Cecil Gouache, with whom we are working on this action. But I also believe that in this room, or across the Commission, or European institutions, and also in Member States public administrations, our colleagues like-minded as we are, who believe that we should look at legislation, we should make it more interoperable. So I think this is the moment to step out from our silo and start to build a community of practitioners and exchange experience, and to walk the talk. Basically, I stop here, and I open my ears to listen to my fellow panelists and learn from their experience and then also engage into discussion. Thank you.